This video will discuss the clausius klopiron equation in chemical thermodynamics. So we saw from the previous video for the klopiron equation that if we have two phases in a coexistence curve, we have one degree of freedom. So as we change the temperature or pressure, the other one must respond correspondingly to keep the phases in equilibrium. So the derivative of the pressure of that, of that coexistence curve with respect to the temperature of that coexistence curve was equal to the transition molar enthalpy of that phase transition divided by the temperature of that transition times the molar volume change during that transition. So we're assuming here that the molar enthalpy change of transition is approximately constant, and that's usually a pretty good approximation over a reasonable number, a few tens of Kelvin. But the bigger problem here is that uh, the transition uh, molar volume change is often not constant, especially if you're going to a gas over a varying range of pressure. Because molar volumes of gases are highly dependent on pressure. So what we want to do is look for uh, vaporization, and I assume you could also apply this to sublimation as well. So during vaporization, the liquid gas coexistence curve specifically, we're looking for an expression which is going to be valid over a wider range of pressure and temperature changes. So we see that dp dt equals uh, the molar enthalpy change of vaporization over the temperature times the uh, molar volume change of transition. So the molar volume change of vaporization is going to be equal to the vol molar volume of the gas minus the molar volume of the liquid. As we saw in a video on enthalpy long, long ago, the molar volume of gases is much, much larger than the molar volume of liquids at typical pressures. If something around one bar, uh, we saw that uh, during, during the vaporization of liquid nitrogen, the molar volume of the, of the gas at one bar is over a thousand times greater than the molar volume of the liquid. So often this uh, molar volume change of vaporization, we can just use the molar volume of the gas and get away with it as a pretty good approximation. It'll usually only matter to the third or fourth significant figure if we're talking about pressures around one bar. Okay, for an ideal gas, we have PV bar equals RT. From PV equals NRT, V bar is V over N. So the molar volume of an ideal gas is equal to RT over the pressure. So if we substitute that in, we have dp dt equals the molar enthalpy change of vaporization divided by T times P over RT. So if we multiply things and rearrange this equation such that all the pressure dependence is on this side and all the temperature dependence is on this side, what we get is an integral from P1 to P2 of dP over P and equals an integral from T1 to T2 of delta VAP H bar over RT squared dT. So this integral is the natural log of P, so ln P2 minus ln P1, uh, add that evaluation there. Over here, the integral of something times 1 over T squared is the same thing times minus 1 over T. So this is minus delta VAP H bar over RT evaluated at T1 and T2. So we can rearrange this result into the following result. The natural log of pressure 2 over pressure 1 equals the negative enthalpy change of vaporization divided by the gas constant times 1 over temperature 1, sorry, 1 over temperature 2 minus 1 over temperature 1. So this is the clausius klopiron equation, and this is what relates our starting temperature and pressure of a liquid gas coexistence curve to the final temperature and pressure of a liquid gas coexistence curve. So if we start at a given temperature and pressure and we want to know what the pressure of uh, vaporization or what the temperature of vaporization is at a different pressure, we can compute that through this type of equation. Yep. So as I said, given the enthalpy of given the molar enthalpy of vaporization, a temperature of vaporization and a pressure of vaporization, we can calculate the temperature of vaporization for another pressure 
or the pressure of vaporization for another given temperature. So the standard um, temperature of vaporization is the boiling point at one bar of pressure. The normal temperature of vaporization is, what is the boiling point at one atmosphere. Typically, we're more concerned with the standard case here. <clears throat> so additionally, what this equation says here is if we're given two sets of the temperature and pressure at which uh, the vaporization occurs, or more likely a set of points which we do a linear regression of, across, we can plot the natural log of the pressure versus the inverse of the temperature, and the slope of that plot will be this here, the negative uh, molar enthalpy change of vaporization divided by the gas constant. So what we can actually do is, if we have the, the boiling temperature at a series of pressures, we can actually derive what the enthalpy change of, vaporiz of vaporization is during that phase transition.